This is part two of lesson 45. We're talking about using trig substitution to take antiderivatives. In the last video, we talked about how we can rewrite x's and dx's and these square roots of x squared minus 16, things like that. We can rewrite them using trig. Now we're going to see why that's useful. So we are going to look at the indefinite integral of, uh, we can say, dx over the square root of x squared minus 16. Um, or we can think of that as 1 over the square root of x squared minus 16 dx. Either way, we're going to integrate that. And you might think, okay, first thing we're going to do is draw that triangle we just drew on the last page. But no, be careful. The first thing you're going to do is look to see if you can use u substitution. So remember to try u sub first. It's always the easiest way to do integration. If it's there, we want to do that first. In this case, the derivative of the inside function, the inside, the inside of our square root, would be the derivative of x squared minus 16, which would be 2x. The 2 is not my problem, but there's no x up here. So I can't use u substitution. Had there been an x up here, that's what I would have done. I would have said u equals x squared minus 16, du equals 2x dx. I would have fixed my coefficient, done some substitution, gone like that. That's not an option here. So instead, we're going to find another way to substitute out this x squared and this dx. Instead of substituting it for u, we're going to substitute it out for the theta. So let's draw our triangle. And this is where you want to remember what we talked about in the last video, remembering where to put each piece of this triangle. What you're going to do to look for is look for the hypotenuse first. If you can identify the hypotenuse first, then the other sides kind of, well first of all it doesn't even really matter that much where you put the other sides, but they're easier to place anyway. So our hypotenuse has to be the biggest of the three sides since we are subtracting from an x. That means the x must be the hypotenuse. And that means that this 16 must be one of the other legs, one of the legs squared. So obviously that is 4 squared, so one of our legs is 4. You can put it in whichever spot you want. My recommendation is if one of the legs is just a plain, nice, simple whole number, put it on the adjacent side and let the variable be on the opposite. So the variable will be the square root of x squared minus 16. And now we've got a right triangle whose sides work in the Pythagorean theorem. That's what we're looking for. And they'll label one of those angles as theta. To be honest, it doesn't matter which angle is theta, but we place the 4 down here based on knowing I was going to put the theta there. It just makes our life easier. We're going to deal with secant instead of cosecant. That's better. So let us figure out how we can replace the dx and the square root of x squared minus 16 in our integral. And remember, that's the idea here. Like I said, with u sub, we take out our u and our x and our dx and replace it with a u and a du. Well, when we're doing trig substitution, we're going to take out whatever we have with an x and our dx and replace it with thetas instead and d thetas. And we'll be able to integrate that because it'll be a nice easy trig derivative integral. So that's our goal here. So let's figure out how we can write this. You can, if you can memorize the tips, the um, guide from the last page, that's great. I don't memorize it. I just draw the triangle and identify that the easiest definition here is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So that is the secant. So the secant of theta is equal to x over 4. And I'm just going to move that 4 over now because I know I'm going to want to later. Um, the reason I knew to do secant and not cosine is because I don't really want to mess with putting an x into a denominator. It's not like it's impossible. I can just rearrange things later. But I'd rather just keep my x's in the numerator. So that's why I use hypotenuse over adjacent, or secant, instead of adjacent over hypotenuse. So if x is equal to 4 times the secant of theta, there's no x in here to take out, so I'm, that doesn't really help me. But 
I do use that to find the dx, the differential of x, which is 4 times secant theta times tangent theta in respect to theta, or times d theta. And so what I'm going to do is take out this dx and replace it with this. I'll do that in just a minute. It's not going to help to do that unless I can also take out the denominator, that square root of x squared minus 16. So I'm going to look at my triangle and say, oh, well, that is the opposite leg across from my angle theta. And I can use the opposite over adjacent, that's tangent, the opposite leg. And again, I could say over 4, over the adjacent, but I'm just going to get used to doing this right away. Move that 4 over. And now I can do some substitutions. I can take out my dx and replace it with 4 secant theta tangent theta d theta. And I can take out my square root of x squared minus 16 in the denominator and replace it with 4 times the tangent of theta. And notice there's a whole bunch of canceling out here. The 4s, the tangents cancel out. So what I'm left with is just the antiderivative secant theta d theta, which we discussed in recent classes. We know this. This is one we're supposed to have memorized. It is the ln of the absolute value of the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta. Let's see. Now, only problem is this theta was some made-up thing that I threw in there. The original problem was looking for the antiderivative of something in respect to x, which means I need to make sure my answer has only x's in it. I've got to put the x back in. Luckily, I have the triangle still. So when I see the secant of theta, I can just say, oh, that's easy. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So that secant of theta is just going to be x over 4. This is all inside the natural log. And the tangent of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that'll be just the square root of x of x squared minus 16 over 4. And that is my answer. One quick note. I mentioned this a couple of classes ago. These, these answers are going to look weird. There really isn't any reason why you would look at this and say, like, oh, of course, the derivative of that is uh, 1 over x square root of x squared minus 16. Like, you're not really supposed to see that right away. But what you can do is go to our um, Desmos, and you can check your answer quickly. You're not going to be able to get an antiderivative out of Desmos, but you can check. Our answer was the ln of, you got to put the parentheses here before you start the absolute value. Sorry about that. It's just a quirk with Desmos. The ln of the absolute value of x over 4 plus the square root of x squared minus 16 over 4. I don't really care what that looks like. It doesn't matter to me. In fact, I can just turn it off if I wanted to. What I care about is what its derivative looks like. And more specifically, does that derivative look the same as my original integrand, the square root of x squared minus 16? If they are the same thing, that means we've done our job right. So that means our answer was correct. We can look at one more example here in this video. And then the next video will be um, a slightly different application of this. So let's, let's read this and translate it first. We want the definite integral, ooh, definite integral, let's change things up, from 0 to 2 of the reciprocal of the sum of 4 and the square of x in respect to x. Now, you might notice that this one doesn't have a square root in it, which means it's a little bit different from the examples we saw. And that's true, but it doesn't change our strategy. You'll see that not having the square root doesn't make a big deal in the end. What we're going to do here is draw our triangle again. 
And just like before, we're going to identify the hypotenuse first. Well, the 4 and the x, or I should say the 2 and the x, the two sides, that are they're being added together to build the third side, which means the 2 and the x are the two legs. And like I said, we want to put the x on the opposite, the constant on the adjacent, which means the third side is the square root of 2 squared plus x squared. And so we can use whatever trig ratios we can here. The tangent of theta is equal to x over 2. So I'll put the 2 on the, by the tangent, which means that dx is equal to 2 secant squared theta d theta, because the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And we're also going to want to figure out something to do with that 4 plus x squared. And that takes two steps here, but it's not too tricky. The square root of 4 plus x squared over 2 is equal to the secant of theta. Which means usually I don't do this in two steps, but what that means is the square root of 4 plus x squared by itself is equal to 2 secant theta. And we pointed out before, I don't care about the square root of 4 plus x squared. I want to know what 4 plus x squared by itself is. That's what I want to be able to substitute out. Well, that's not a problem. I can just square both sides here and say that the 4 plus x squared by itself out of the square root is equal to 4 times secant squared theta. So now I can do my substitution. And this is an important difference when we're dealing with uh, definite integrals. Remember that when we see a definite integral from 0 to 2, there is an implied x equals, that the limits of integration are both in terms of whatever variable you're integrating in respect to. Those all have to match. Well, I'm about to take that dx out and replace it with something with a d theta, which means that my integral, my limits of integration and my integral should be in terms of theta. But I don't really want to worry about that yet. I could put the 0 and the 2 in terms of theta. I think that makes it more complicated. So what I'm going to do instead is just keep saying that these are in terms of x, and then it's OK. As long as I put the x equals there, it's OK that I'm about to have an integral in respect to theta. It means I wouldn't be able to evaluate using the fundamental theorem until I fixed either the x's and turned them into thetas, or the thetas and turn them back into x. As long as I write the x equals there, I'm okay. And let's do our substitution. 1 over 4 plus x squared is um, 1 over 4 times the secant squared of theta. And dx is 2 secant squared theta. And so what happens there is most things cancel. The secant squares cancel out. I can reduce the 2 fourths also. Might as well bring them out front. Better hurry. Um, and so we'll have 1 half times the definite integral from when x equals 0 to when x equals 2. The x equals is still necessary because I still have an integral in respect to theta. But everything has been canceled or taken out except for the d theta. And so I can integrate that. The integral of d theta is just theta evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 2. And remember, I still can't plug in the 2 and the 0 because those are values for x, not for theta. So I can't plug them in. What I need to do is either write the x in terms of theta, but again, that was a little bit more complicated. Instead, what I'm going to do is turn theta into x. Well, looking back at my triangle, this angle has a sine of x over 2. Sorry, a tangent of x over 2. So I'm going to go back to uh, the original one. The tangent of my angle is equal to x over 2, which means if I wanted the angle by itself, I could say it is equal to the arc tangent of x over 2. So that can be replaced in our expression that we're left with. 
So I can rewrite this as 1 half times instead of theta, I'm going to write arctangent of x over 2 evaluated from 0 to 2. Notice how now that I'm talking about x's again, right, I've got my x back in there, I don't need to write x equals 0 and x equals 2 um, because that's the variable that we have there. So I can evaluate that 1 half times the arctangent of 2 over 2 minus the arctangent of 0. And you are supposed to know what the arctangent of 1 is. You are supposed to know that the angle whose tangent is 1 is pi over 4, and the angle whose tangent is 0 is 0. So our final answer here would be pi over 8. That's 1 half times pi over 4.